How massive is this crocodile and what a great view because we're almost eye level with him. Isn't that great? That's a different angle, one that I have not seen for quite some time. And the more often we see these crocodiles, the bigger and bigger they actually start to look, whether it's because I haven't seen any giants, because I haven't been to Zambia, I haven't been to Kenya just yet for, and where there are really big crocodiles, but he is enormous. You can actually see him breathing every now and then, which was really cool when we were up close. But he looks in very good condition. I can only imagine the amount of fish that this crocodile must actually be feeding on. It's got very clean white teeth too. Looks like you brush them on a regular basis. What a cool thing. Now this is an amazing screenshot. I wish my lens was long enough that I could get this view that you've got right now. This is so beautiful. So you're going to have to share them with us. Remember hashtag Safari Live because that is really, really, really great. And of course, that's one of the amazing things out here in the Sabi Sands is that we are able to get these up close and intimate shots with the animals. Isn't that great? That is probably one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Look at all the scales on its body. We can see them clearly now. Different sort of shapes and sizes. And then of course those ridges all the way down its back. And you can really see just by the patterning on its body that it does definitely look like a log if it is in the water. Long, very powerful tail. You look like you're missing a little bit of the tail, don't you think? It just ends all of a sudden. I wonder, maybe it's just the angle that it looks like. It's, it's slightly shorter than what it should be. But very, very powerful, using that as a fin and able to slice through the water and move at unbelievable speeds. Now, if you've ever seen a crocodile swimming quickly through the water, you must see how fast they can run on land. That is frightening. The way that they lift their body up. Look, he's lifting his leg up now. And then run. How cool is this? Now, one thing I'm really excited about is I would like to see some baby crocodiles. I have not seen a baby crocodile for very, 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 very long time. And they're beautiful. They've got the most amazing coloration. I always find with the young animals, though, their colors are a lot prettier than the adults because they're new. But a little crocodile has almost got a yellow-green eye and they're more yellowish brown rather than the darker browns that you see <clears throat> on this fella here. And then they've got black spots, sort of like the adult too. And, and again, crocodiles need camouflage too, even though their, their sort of pattern of their skin makes them look like a log. Those other colors help too. <laughs> Hello, William. I'm still waiting for my picture of your elephant cake. Remember, William is, is eight years old. He had his eighth birthday the other day. And you've said to me that I'm the bravest guide in the whole wide world. <laughs> Thank you, William. I'm glad you think so. I think everyone else thinks I'm probably, um, maybe maybe not the bravest. I'm well, scared. Think you you think I am as well? Yeah. Ferg, you're being very nice to me today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Ferg is always nice to everybody. So, so thank you very much, William. That's very kind of you. Now, because William, it was your birthday. I know that it is Tesla's birthday today. Tesla is seven. How great is that? Tesla's my blonde friend. I've got two blonde friends. And Tesla, it's not only the crocodile that's giving you a big smile. It's a happy birthday. I know you wanted to see some zebra, but I couldn't find the zebra that we saw earlier. It was still hiding away. But there's some hippos that want to say hello to you and want to say happy birthday as well. Hopefully, wouldn't it be nice if the hippos started calling? I think it would be grand. And I think if they do start... Yeah. Oh my goodness, Tesla. Did you hear that? That wasn't me. That was the hippo. I think it's warming up. Perhaps it's warming its vocal cords before it gets into a real happy birthday to you. We'll have to see if those words fit in when a hippo makes its call. But we are getting to the time of the afternoon now where the light is fading. The hippos are going to get more and more active because they're going to start their adventure and searching for the sweetest and shortest grass. But this is the tree that they pulled over. Remember I was showing you pictures of uh, the hippos that had eaten the we were eating the weaver's nests. This tree used to be covered in weaver's nests. There's now not one nest left here and they pulled it all into the water. And I don't think it wasn't intentional. They're obviously just trying to get the nests off of it to eat it. But now it's perfect. It's actually great because during the day you can go and sit there and not worry about the sun. There's a little one. Hello little hippopotamus. I think that's a bit deep for you to stand. 
And I just love how the hippos are right underneath the crocodile and neither of them seem to mind each other too much. That really is fantastic. And of course there's an unwritten rule between crocodiles and hippos. You leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. <gasps> Hang on, I've got a new bird for maybe some of you. There's a pied kingfisher. Um, can you see where those buffalo weavers are? Oh, there we go. Look at that. I was trying to get a kingfisher on screen all morning. The brown-hooded kingfisher was evading me. But the beautiful...